besides, I, I think the performances in, in the movie, and again, you, you mentioned Tony Hale. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah. you've got, it's just. It, King of comedy. I, I, I mean, call Tony Hale King of comedy. <laughs> did you know him? I mean, he plays Jess Oppenheimer. I mean, know of him. Yeah. I, I couldn't believe when I was acting opposite him, opposite him because I'm thinking, you've acted opposite Julia Louise Dreyfus. You guys have created some of the greatest comedic scenes ever on Veep. And I'm now having to like stand opposite you and you must think I'm absolutely crap, you know? So, <laughs> <laughs> wow, God, she, Julia is like an incredible comedian. But, um, but he's so generous, Tony, and he was so... Um, we were also anxious, you know, because we were like, oh my gosh, we have to deliver on such a high level here and it's terrifying. And it was actually really um, comforting to see all these extraordinary actors just sweating. They were sweating it. Every single one of them. He, he and also, they're all magnificent. So he, play, he plays Jess Oppenheimer, who was the creator of the show. And one, yeah. of, the, one of the fascinating things that... Besides the performances of the movie, it's Aaron Sorkin's knowledge of television and his mm. knowledge of the politics of TV production and the importance <laughs> yeah. of a title, a producer yeah. title, and all of those things. And I love mm. the I love the specificity of those scenes where you're, you know, Lucille Ball and Jess Oppenheimer are having an argument over a producer credit, and it's it feels to the viewer like incredibly high stakes. It's it's yeah. fascinating in that way. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, everything. He does know this world. This is yeah. Aaron's world. And I think even the monologue that I give where I'm talking about, I have to do a show every week for 36 weeks of the year, and I have to deliver, and then I have to do it all again next year. So let's do it again, and let's get it right. That the idea of having to create not just something that's good, but something great every single week over and over again and you know that the show as he describes it when it came on the water usage in america would stop it would go down that shows you everyone 60 million people in america would sit down to watch the i love lucy show like what that's crazy and at the time that was a third of the population right yeah, it was. That's it, insane. Yeah, the entire it, it it can never exist again, no. and has rarely existed since. But yeah, yeah, it it and and it also gives credit the movie. But the pressure of that, good oh, lord. Oh yeah, yeah. And she carried that. She carried it, you know. And she was trying to have a marriage, and she was trying to raise two kids. Will be pregnant on the show, and she was trying to negotiate and deal with, you know, the the executives and the and the network, and she was having to smoke Philip Morris cigarettes, and she was having, you know, there were so many things because they were the sponsors and keep everybody happy, Westinghouse, and I mean, all of the things that she was juggling, you just go, what? How did you do it, lady? And directing oh. enormous parts of the show. Yeah, because she was which such is a what Aaron captures really yeah. well too, because she won't back down. You know, a lot of people would go, okay, well, all right. Today we have a subpar director and we'll just go with that and the show will be okay. She's like, no, no. I mean, some of the funny stuff, very funny stuff, is the way she deals with poor Donald, the director who's been brought in. Uh, <laughs> so she eats him alive. <laughs> she does eat him alive. <laughs> yeah. She's very concerned about the flowers. Yeah. But I mean, it's... Well, I think yeah. part of that is... You, it's got to be funny. You can't have anything in here that doesn't work and it's got to be specific and it's detailed. And that's the other great thing is you see comedy isn't just show up and, hey, we're going to riff and it's going to work. It's hard, hard, hard work. And I think any comedian, be they a stand-up, be they people that are in shows, be they whatever it is, they will all attest to that. And sometimes you get lucky, but if you're having to do it week after week and deliver, you got to work at it. 